when progressives are literally like, there's nothing I, I, I will ever do that can make people for Joe Biden because he's funding the genocide in Gaza. There's nothing ever that Biden could do. Biden could come out and suck my dick and I still wouldn't vote for him. The only option that leads people who in the Democratic Party is to like is to move rightward to try to appeal to centrist like the most progressive per people in Congress is like AOC like AOC is pretty progressive she's not like that unhinged or anything versus like the people that are elected on the Republican side are like Marjorie Taylor Greene who is like literally a fucking Jewish space laser wildfire conspiracy theorist the left and progressives in general is focusing on culture that's right and actually not talking about the things like you touched on before that actually really matter which is economics that's right the fact that Bro, people the for gap real between... when are we getting progressives to read about alternative monetary policy regimes it ago during gamergate people thought the white male gamers were the assholes i've got news for you today it's trans twitter it's socialist twitter it's terrorist sympathizer twitter it's us Base. Brandon, well, welcome to Trigonometry. We've been working on this interview. We've got a bunch of questions to ask you, but first of all, lots of people told you not to come on the show. Oh my God. I announced this, what was it, two days ago? And my DMs have been nothing. Are you a student in international relations? No. <laughs> the people calling you transphobes and Nazis and racists. And I'm always like, can you show me a clip of what they've said to like make you feel that way? It's always the most silly thing. It is, uh, I don't know. It's like Just no one me doing a Hitler salute. Yes, yeah. exactly yeah. that. Silly yeah, stuff the like KKK that. costume, yeah. I think, yeah. was a little well, much. It was maybe. a nice party, yeah. what can you say? <laughs> um, but anyway, welcome to the show. Thank uh, you for having me. I'm it's really great to have you. I've been following uh, a lot of the things you've been saying recently, and it was very interesting for us to, to, to get you on the show to talk about them because... I don't know if you saw, I wrote an I article understand. very shortly after October 7th for the Free Press mm -hmm. uh, called, called The Day the Delusions Died. Well. And my argument was that I thought that it was no longer possible for a lot of good people on the left to pretend that the extremes of the left were not going off the rails. Yeah. And you are someone who is outright progressive, yep. Democrat progressive, yep. raising money to, to fight Trump and all my the rest My literal of job is to get Democrats elected. Right. Like, I'm on the team. Yes, you're on the team. And I see you now being one of the very few people who's willing to stand up against the anti-Semitic extremes on your own side. Not just anti-Semitic, but there's also large elements of anti-whiteness and all sure. sorts of other stuff going yeah. on there. So why have you suddenly taken this position? I, I think the better question is where the hell is everyone else? This is the most obvious moral position in the entire world to take. Um, you know, like Hamas, these are you have any favorite streamer? Um Destiny, obviously. Um I don't I, I don't know who my favorite streamer is. I do watch a lot of Destiny, but I don't I don't know. <laughs> not good people. Hezbollah, you know, the Houthis, these are not good people. But they're clearly, Brianna, just resistant fighters. They're, they're res resisting the Israeli occupation, open air prison, concentration camp conditions. So the fact that the progressive fringe is now standing with the literal fucking terrorists, like, what the hell are we thinking? This is not very difficult. So for me, it's, it's really been a realization because there have been so many things over the last decade that I've just shut my mouth about and I've gone along with. And it's really at a point now where it's it's gut check time. This is principles time. Whose team are you on? Are you on team democracy? Or are you on team burn everything down? And it's been really disillusioning to see. You're standing with bigger terrorists then. Oh no, I know. I know your position is on books. Just how few people on my own side have principles. I always thought that what we were doing. Also, dude, I can't, I, dude, I mention this every time. The fact that they, I don't care that they have this watermark down here, but they make it like, uh, fucking radiate every about 30 seconds or whatever, better. pissing me off. And it's been very eye-opening to see it's actually about personal power. Well, I, I'm going to ask you a question that will sort of sound a little bit like an I told you so or anything, but it's not intended in that sure. way. I, mm. I, I guess a lot of people who are in our position, mm. Francis and I both always thought of ourselves as liberal and on the left, and we worked in a very progressive comedy industry in the UK. And what happened with us is we said what you were saying now right. six years ago. Yeah. And we became, you know, Nazi terrorists. And to be fair, I was part of the crowd that was shouting you down and calling you those names. Right. I'm sorry. Where do I recognize this guy from the Purple Jacket from? Um, he, I mean, trigonometry, right? Uh, I think he's, I think he just said he's done comedy stuff, but I only know him from trigonometry. No, no, well, you weren't yeah. shouting me down personally, but I'm I, talking I, about people yeah. like you yeah. saying that stuff. Right. So I guess. 
I'm curious what you think is going to happen, first of all, with you now, because... Biden said a war going on until now is about Netanyahu's power preservation. Well, I mean, that is... Well, Netanyahu wants the war to go on because he knows that <laughs> he's not willing to accept any political costs because he wants to stay in power because he is worried about his corruption charges. That part is, like, true, but it's kind of, like, separate from the question of whether or not continuing a war actually is just or not. It's sort of... The way it has and whether it's practical is also a different question from whether or not it's just to do so. Happened today. Is... Because it may be the case that it would be justified to do so, but it's simply not practical to do so, in which case it'd probably end the war, but um But but it may still be morally just to do so. But well OOP is unjustified true. Oh oppression. <laughs> well it wasn't uh wasn't this the guy who who was mad at Pearl Davis for interviewing Nick Fuentes for something? Uh he might have been. <laughs> Um, all I know him from is trigonometry. That's all I've ever seen him in. Anyone who was able, willing to challenge that fringe that you're talking about, which mm -hmm. is anti-Western, it's anti-male, it's anti-white, it's anti-Jewish, right. etc., would say what you're saying, what we've been saying for years, and they would immediately become evil right-wing, Nazi, far-right, etc. And that's kind of it. And no one else would stand up and say anything. That's right. As has happened. So what, what like, what, what are you expecting to happen? Well, I've lost more friends than I can count, right? Um, so I'm very much trying to make new friends. I think the, the long-term path of this is progressivism and socialism in the United States. It's a cultural dead end. This is not going to go anywhere. There's no universe where like progressives win power and manage to get a ton of Congress, you know, congressional seats, and pass the legislation. Should have respected international law, secure the border Gaza, not go launch their occupied annex, not go launch a, a oppression in their gee, sorry you're shortening and it makes me confused because i read op as just op in their occupied annex called gaza true uh i mean i think the fact that they probably there definitely are some people in israel that want to annex gaza is incredibly cringe and i think israel probably needs to hold uh new elections to hopefully fucking get rid of those people um i think the fact that they don't have a good plan for what happens after the war is also wild um yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> legislation that I believe in, it is devolved into exactly as you say, a bunch of culture war nonsense that is not about policy and now literally siding with terrorists. So, you know, what I've had so many conversations with friends about this because every single progressive activist that I know is really frustrated with this destructive tendency that we have. Hmm. And all of us are going, Would you be pissed if Israel annexed Gaza? Uh, permanently? Yeah. Temporarily, it, it depend. If Israel had like a good post-war plan that involved having control over, well, I'd be mad if they annexed it. Yeah, um, yeah, if they annexed it, because annex it kind of implies like permanent in an attempt to like gain territory. Um, I mean, I, if Israel like had a plan to like set up a government in Gaza that required occupying Gaza for some period of time, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing intrinsically, but. What can we do? We, you know, your, your industry has audience capture where you kind of get into a lane and you can't challenge your own audience because your numbers will drop. I think in the progressive space, there's very much the same thing where there's this tendency to go lefter and lefter and lefter and lefter. And now we're at a point where we can't even say things like trans women don't have periods without people getting really upset about them. Look at my. Hard for me to really feel attached to one side because of conflict, really. If I was a Palestinian, my opinion on Israel and the Israelis would violate which US if I'm an Israeli my opinion on Palestinian is valid yeah that's kind of valid <laughs> oh Piglar17 thanks for the follow man oh dude I'm so glad I've reached my follower goal at 122 times now oh is this your first stream dude um what was I gonna say their system is is built broken democracy is not uh, it's not at all in play it's not at all in play in a colonial supremacist system true um I understand there are plenty of criticisms of Israeli democracy he can make. Um, I literally said early in the stream that I don't think settlers should be able to vote because fuck that. Just fuck them. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, but at the end of the day, Israel can hold elections and their leadership can change. Hamas does not hold elections. Their leadership can't change, but through violence, apparently. So My mentions literally right now. So someone's got to stand up and go, this is not right. This is crazy town. I didn't get into progressive politics to talk about trans women having periods. I got into progressive politics to pass fucking health care. So we, we're either serious 
about course correcting. I don't want to poke at Israelis in Gaza if you're pink. Donald Trump and Trail MAGA base. are going to win everything. And the pain for the Democratic Party is going to be extreme. We've got to start talking more to people in the middle, and we need to be reaching out to sane Republicans, in my view. Brianna, don't you think part of the problem is when it comes, look, and both sides suffer to this. I think another good point that she's made, like on Twitter before, is that, like, when progressives are literally like, there's nothing I, can, I will ever do that can make people for Joe Biden because he's funding the genocide in Gaza. There's nothing ever that Biden could do. Biden could come out and suck my dick, and I still wouldn't vote for him. The only option that leaves people who in the democratic party is to like is to move rightward to try to appeal to centrist because you're literally just stating that no matter what biden does you're not going to vote for him so their only option to get more voters is try try to move rightward to appeal to more people like <laughs> suffer with this but i think the left suffer with this more it's this purity ritual that you have you have to you are not left unless you do a b c d e f g da, 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 da. And all of a sudden, the moment you challenge one of those tenets, you're out. That's exactly right. I mean, I, again, look at my mention. She can see this firsthand. It's not enough to, like, I am as progressive as she can get. Universal health care. I want structural solutions hey. to heal this gaping wound of racism that's existed in our country since slavery. You know, name a progressive policy. I'm very much in, in favor of it. But when it comes to the optics, right, we've got to start having... Oh, no. Oh, no. We're... Put it where Vosh optics matter. Serious conversations about how people perceive us. People perceive progressives as assholes. Mm -hmm. That's just the truth. A decade ago during Gamergate, people thought the white male gamers were the assholes. I've got news for you. Today it's trans Twitter, it's socialist Twitter, it's terrorist sympathizer Twitter. It's us. We are the ones doxing people. We are the ones sending death threats. We are canceling everyone in sight. And at the end of the day, people are not going to trust assholes with power. I'm sorry. It's just the truth. And you said at the start of this conversation something that I found very interesting. You basically said that you had reservations about things that had happened before yes. October 7th. What were Visiting those? Visiting the rice uh, is probably one of the main benefits. Uh, main benefits as conflict affords us. It can be used to break up the left-wing coalition by turning, yeah, turning its constituent factions against itself on the basis of any ideology against each other. Oh, yeah. Is that you got to copy the, what the Trump viewers say? God, I wish... This fucking, I, I could add like a background to this stream thing, but I can only, the only way I can have it is like permanently. I don't want it there permanently. I only want, I only want it there when it's messages, but yeah, until I'm popular enough where there's enough messages that I, there's just always some on screen. I can't have it on. Things that you shut your mouth over. I mean, I can't. And, but, and yeah. the second part of that question yeah. is, do you regret it now seeing what it's become? I definitely do. So let me give you a really specific example. When I was running for Congress in uh, 2018, right, you had the Women's March and you had elements of the Women's March that were out there with this pro-Palestine, anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic nonsense, very anti-Israel and veering into the most anti-Semitic language that you could possibly have. That was wrong. I made the decision to keep my mouth shut which was a tremendous error in judgment. And because people like me shut up in those years, it kept getting worse. And those seeds kept growing. And now it's basically taken over the entire progressive movement. I don't know if it can be saved in time. And you can go into any number of issues, like you know, self-ID with trans people, or, <laughs> you know, I remember during oh, game- Self-ID. <laughs> the other problem, since as well, since unfortunately it seems mainly right-wing dissidents feel a like strong attachment to one side here, so I'm inclined to believe to a degree to which it disrupts the left wing coalition is greater. Yes, cut your hair short. Wait, what? Oh, you, oh, okay. Okay, you know, there was this expansionist thing. I told fucking Adam. Yeah, Adam hasn't been on Discord. I told him to send me the barber that he was telling me about. And I'll get the fucking fuckboy haircut that he told me to get. And then if I blow up, this is the deal we made, guys. If I blow up, I have to add him. I have to add him to my team. I hate he that's that's what he said. <laughs> Which um Adam could be goofy sometimes, but I mean he I think Adam could be a good manager. I think I think that's valid. That it wasn't enough to talk about the number of women we were hiring. The red pill mindset is a good manager mindset. Game industry, you know, now we had to obliterate white unless you're managing a woman. As, as something that we were featuring in games. And I'm like, uh, it's a little bit extreme, but we'll go along with it. So it was just one more step after another. And now it's 10 years later. Look at where we are. We are completely unelectable. This strategy is failing. Mm. Uh, I suppose the, the question that I'm curious about, and, and I, I hear people on left and right saying this often, and I don't understand why they say it. So I, and you did say it, so I'm curious to explore this. You called the color. So you feel attached to present hairstyle? No, not really. Um, 
No. <laughs> culture war nonsense. It is. Uh, well, you say it is. And I suppose it depends. What, what exactly do you mean by that, first of all, before I, I jump sure. in with my So opinion. we have different jobs, right? You are a public advocate and a public figure, and you have a very specific agenda that is pro-free speech, one I agree with. Mm. But my job is different. My job is public policy. My job is to get candidates elected, and my job is to back-channel specific... You it's short at any point? This is as short as my hair has ever been, really. I used to have really long hair. ...specific bills to get them passed. Right. So in my view, as soon as you get something like family medical leave and you turn it into a right versus left culture war, oh, sure. you have automatically lost the conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you about yeah. I guess the reason I ask you, Bran, is that um, the way I see what's going on, and I'll lay it out for you the sure. way that I see it, and sure. you feel free to pick away at it, challenge, whatever, is here's my conception of the culture war as it happens. Uh, I feel that there is a determined, organized attempt to undermine the basic building. That's me, it's worse. It's not true. Here's old long hair, Jared, on my Instagram. Abu. Most of the pictures aren't me. Want to leave? Oops. Blocks of our civilization. Yes. Why I does Pine their ban birth control and they can't figure out why they keep losing? That's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and those of us who are willing. Also, she mentioned earlier, she is like right in saying that like the hardcore progressives are like unelectable or whatever. But also, if you compare who actually is elected in Congress, like the most progressive per people in Congress is like AOC. Like AOC is pretty progressive, but she's not like that unhinged or anything. Versus like the people that are elected on the Republican side are like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is like literally a fucking Jewish space laser wildfire conspiracy theorist who fucking planted a pipe bomb on January 6th. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. She was wearing the same shoes. Same shoes. Um, so to a see that and yes. b say something about it are called culture warriors that's what people say about me for oh, example. not oh, many players he's, just, he's nope. just a culture warrior and, I'm, and my view is our culture is really important I agree. our culture is why we are where we are our culture is why we're successful our culture yep. is why our civilization is rich and powerful and dominant around the world sure because of our culture yeah so if people on the progressive left sorry same shoes as who the person who planted the pipe bomb <laughs> um this person who planned a pipe bomb, I think Marjorie Taylor Greene had the same shoes as her, or whoever planted it. Um, it probably, I don't think it actually was her, but it's, it is funny. I think, yeah, maybe she didn't have the same shoes. I don't know, I thought she did, but I was seeing memes about it on Twitter. I want to check this out at some point. Was this archive.org? 51 uh, Zionist Nazi collaborators. I don't... Okay. This is, what, 1933? I'm sure there have been a lot of Zionist collaborators with the Nazis. There have also been Palestinian collaborators with the Nazis. Hussein, Husseini, Al Husseini, who was a collab Nazi collaborator, right? But, um... There are not all Zionists are good people. Shocking, I know. There are, in fact, many bad Zionists. Then it is people on the progressive left. There are some on the right now, too, in response, I think. If there are people who want to... We have nothing to lose, but our hinge is based. ...say that those building blocks are evil or right. wrong or bad, I think it's important to push back against that and to prevent them from succeeding. Yeah. That's how I see the culture war. So, to me, defending our culture isn't nonsense. Does that make sense? Yeah, so if you're defining it that way, I'm a thousand percent on oh, okay. board with you. I think there's a growing tendency on the progressive side to try to burn everything inside down. Yeah. They're the I'm mirror like image of MAGA. They're the accelerationist. Desk. They want to burn democracy, uh, like our institutions, our news, everything inside to the ground, right? They want to burn the idea of gender to the ground mm. itself. This is not a way for a culture to survive. Like, they think the United States is the biggest evil in the world. Like, they just don't, uh, do they not know what has happened in Syria over the last decade? Like, they just have so little information. Oh, well, clearly that was all the U.S.'s fault. Don't you know that, um, now I'm thinking of Iraq. I don't actually know if we, we probably did bad stuff in Syria before. Well, we definitely have done bad stuff in Syria before. But I'm saying, like, with Iraq, like, we supported Hussam Hussein. Um, I don't know if we ever did anything equivalent to that in Syria. But So I fully agree with you there. 
What I'm saying is, if we are serious about public policy, it makes a U.S. is biggest evil in the world complicit with the Zionist entity. A lot of sense. So do you think Israel? Do you think that's the biggest evil in the world happening right now, dude? I I was I should have that graph on tap. Um, like forty thousand dead, which isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. Um, I don't think that's the biggest evil in the world happening right now. To stop treating everyone on the other fucking side like they're your enemy. Mm -hmm. We've got. Well, to I mean, you could argue that the other bad things happen in the world, or someone of the U.S. is definitely involved in, like I mean, involved in a civil war in Yemen. I think that killed more people, right? Buy I think the issue is that uh, these, these anti-American empire people on the left think that they don't have to take into account strength, basically. So basically, even if another regime would do the same things, it might be worse given they, uh, sorry. Even if another dream would do things, that might be worse given an equivalent level of strength, so it doesn't matter. I don't say I'm a fan of American Empire, but it's completely different for reasons for why lefties hate it. Yeah. I hate, dude, I hate that. I can't believe, I can't believe the mindset change I've had over the past, like a year or whatever. It's just from talking to, uh, a ton of people where like I do, fuck my mic stand. I'm going to have to fix it in a second. Um, but like I do see the point people are making now where it's like, oh, wow. Well, <laughs> um, if the U.S. isn't in somewhere, that kind of means that there might be a vacuum that China or Russia will fill and they aren't good people either. Um, it's like, would you rather your evil empire do it and at least you have some control over that evil empire? Or would you rather Russia and China do it? Ooh, people don't even have control of their evil empire, let alone you. American Empire might actually be more based if it was more like how lefties characterized it. True. Okay, fixed. Whatever. I should look at chat. Send me desks to buy. <laughs> and for more people. I think... No, I'd say it depend on the U.S. to implement racist supremacist policies that Zionist regimes. The Saudi also had... Uh, U.S. bought by King. Yep. Imagine the oligopoly and credit card company. My, my theory of change from here is I think there are a lot of Republicans and moderates out there that think that the corporations are screwing over normal people and they will pass, they will this stand with US their own policies delusions. that address their actual lives. They're not going to do that if they've got to pretend all this crazy stuff is true at the same time. We've got to get buy-in. Are you drunk right now? It's on bookshelf. What the hell? <laughs> I think part of the problem, Brianna, and look, I'm going to be absolutely honest sure. with you when it when my frustrations with the left is that I see the crazies on the left. Yeah. And I see the moderates, the people who I would listen to, the people I think, actually, you've got a real point here, particularly when it comes to economics. And then I'd see them not do anything with, with the nutters over there. And I'm like, well, here's the thing, mate. If you're not going to deal with the nutters over here, how are you going to deal with Apple? That's And we did this to Mag. Right, you had the Nazis marching in Charlottesville. My side said every single Republican is exactly the same as the Nazis marching on Charlottesville. That's exactly how we treated them. Why does the right? Well, I mean, I don't know. When she says my side, I kind of make a trip, but like, I, I, I don't know. I just think back to like that Biden speech in front of Independence Hall or whatever, where he's like incredibly careful to say, like, some MAGA Republicans, a minority of the Republican Party. Um, yeah. I'd have to keep Again, going. it's just like if you look at who's actually in power on the left, it's like people like Biden who are willing to call out white supremacy where it exists, like the Nazis in Charlottesville, but who take great pains to like um, separate out the minority MAGA from the rest of the Republican Party. There are crazies in line and we don't have to do that. You're completely right. This is a double standard. I need help pulling this around and I can't. I can't do this by myself. But I guess my point is why is there not more why is it? Why is there not more backbone within the left to be able to come and stand up? Is it because they're scared of them? Is it because these people actually have a disproportionate sense of power? Is there something else going on? And this is a genuine question on my behalf because I don't understand why. Do you want the real answer or do yes. you want the political answer? I want the real answer. I used to think you were completely full of shit when you talked about cancel culture. I was like, just get over it. You've got every privilege in the world. And now they've run this playbook on me. I understand what happens when they go after your livelihood and your friends and they make a price to just speak your mind and stand up to them. These are cultural bullies. And the truth is there's every incentive to keep your mouth shut and just let the movement get crazier and crazier. So we have, a, this is hard choice time. This is gut check time. 
we either stand up to these crazies, we get back to basics. That means liberalism in the sense, if you want to make an offensive joke, God bless. That's what the First Amendment is about. We've got to be willing to talk to people we disagree with. We can't just, every time someone has a different opinion than us, load it up with moralistic language so we win the argument and they're a terrible person and call it a day and never like have a discussion about anything. There's no incentive to do this. Look at what's happened to my reputation since October 7th. It's been brutal. Like, I, I think it's almost a character flaw. But it what? Okay. I say, for example, U.S. allows oligopoly and credit card companies. This affects huge amounts of global consumers. U.S. has approved oligopoly. This U.S. approved oligopoly is a risk for finances and consumers on a global scale. U.S. allows systemic risk built into oligopoly. Why is that necessarily a risk? I would kind of imagine there's kind of high barriers to entry to being a credit card company. I would imagine it's going to be an oligopoly. Um, I wouldn't want, I don't know if I would want low barriers to entry to be a credit card company. Because like, it's kind of important if you're a credit card company that you have the, you have all the resources necessary to be that. You know about the visa outages? Uh, maybe? I don't know. Uh, what about them? Visa allergies, what does that mean? I need a new desk, goddamn. There comes a point, Brianna, yeah. where you either let this kind of nonsense continue yeah. and you see the decimation of everything that you believe in, yeah. or you stand up. Block. There's no. got to be a time. Because you can't keep... Well, why? For what? Was there a reason behind it? What? I mean... Being supine about these issues and expecting them to go away. I completely agree. Look at what we're doing with the trans children debate. This is such a good example. Okay. Y'all may not agree with me. I think there are some children that need access to health care to transition. I don't think the system is working well now, but I think some need to get through. We need to look at the system and patch the holes. What is the progressive left's answer? to any parent that has a question on any of that. It is shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. It is don't ask those questions. These questions hurt our feelings. We are talking about public healthcare policy. We have got to move back to science and back to reality. And I guess like from your point of view, what is wrong with progressives that we're not doing this? Why do you think I'm one of like five? Well, I think you, you put your finger on it when you talk about the consequences. By the way, this happens on the right increasingly too. Sure. I wrote an article about uh, my critique of I, I praised him for, for some things, but also critiqued his uh, comments about Russia and Ukraine. Tucker mm -hmm. Carlson, I wrote an article. But there's also a risk, again, like, to, to be able to manage credit cards for consumers, you have to be a relatively large institution, right? Because um, you have to be able to, because credit cards are loans, you have to be able to secure those loans. Um, but imagine there's high barriers to entries in the being a into being able to provide credit cards for a reason. <laughs> Girl called Tucker Carlson and the woke right. And someone disinvited me from a party though. <laughs> and you're just going, you're just the mirror image. You want to, you don't believe in diversity of opinion. You, right. you just want your opinion regurgitated. So uh, tribes generally enforce the, the whatever rules of the tribe through any means necessary in order to do that. So I understand that. Um, uh, the question I, I wanted to ask you, I, I guess, is you mentioned that six years ago or 10 years ago, it's one or two questions I want to ask you. Uh, People like you would have been criticizing people like us at the time or whatever, right. and would have said cult cancel culture doesn't exist until you personally experience it. And I've heard that from a lot of people who yeah. have the switch uh, that you're going through. What was it back then that drove you to behave in that way? I think I thought that people like you had all the power, and I thought that we had no power, and I thought that it was the way to get to a better world. Mm -hmm. You know what? We've tried my version of the progressive playbook for 10 years telling comedians, telling jokes we don't like to shut up. <laughs> that doesn't work. Nope. The, the left has had, like, look at what's happened to feminists. Do you know how guilty I feel about this? We've lost Roe in the United States in access to abortion. Feminism should be a very- Are you okay with systematic risk built in oligopoly? I don't know if I'm necessarily okay with it. Uh, because too high cost to develop into the credit card biz. I'm saying like, there's also, there'd also be, everything's trade-offs, right? So there'd be risk associated with smaller companies entering a credit card business. But I don't even know barriers to entry credit card company. New companies are coming on a country. Okay. Uh, the main barrier to creating a new company is the size and network 
and the chicken and egg problem. The merchants won't uh, won't want to go into effort of setting up new exceptions to the card if there aren't a lot of companies willing to carry it. But customers won't uh, want to carry it if there aren't a lot of merchants to accept it. Okay. To set up the Smithy card, you're going to need to set up the clearing house. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Oh, fraud live, really? Hey, six percent for ounces. How about a top eight issuers? I don't know, but what would be a good alternative to this? I guess smaller, like. Are there like. It wouldn't surprise me if there were, and there might not even be justified reason behind them. Um, are there like regulations uh, that prevent new credit card companies from forming? Or is it just no one wants to enter the market, really, because it's too high of a cost to do? very strong public force right now. And it's not, it's never been weaker. Why is feminism so unappealing to so many people? It's because rather than talking about real policy that will affect people's lives, like daycare for children or working wages or reproductive health care or access to a gynecologist, we've defined it to these boutique, like luxury nonsense culture war stuff. So normal women are out there going, this is just not relevant to me. So it's just a it's and the other thing feminism yeah. did as well is it, it some feminism is such a broad church sure. it's a hard word to use accurately but once you once you start trying to convince at least some women that they're supposed to hate men you're going to lose the audience very quickly because women generally don't hate men that's right they want to build a life with a man and have kids and then blah 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 um, I'm fond of my husband so right, I agree yeah. as am yeah. I even though I'm not <laughs> can we can we talk about man or bear here. <laughs> um, Second question I wanted to ask you, and I will, this sounds like a therapy session for Go me for and Francis, and, and we've earned it. Sure. Yeah, after, six yeah. Years after what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. After six years of... No, but I, I will tell you the moment I realized that the left stopped caring about reality. That's right. It was 2016. Look at our open source system, like the system, like a wallet could be imagined. Okay. No, it was 2017. And we, I, we can use crypto if we want to. I saw Steve Bannon go from talk show to talk show to talk show to talk show. And all he did was explain how they won the election. Okay. And nobody listened. Hmm. Nobody listened to what he was saying. Because the agenda was the only way these people could win is by be because they're racist and because they're right. evil and whatever. And nobody listened to what he was saying. And what he was saying is this country is in deep trouble. This country is a place where people so feel so alienated from the economic opportunities that used to be available to them and their families. Uh, they feel so alienated from you know, the, the general narrative about their country is now oh, wait, negative, on. which That's is right. why the phrase make America great again works, even if you don't like it. And I was listening to what he was saying, not from a perspective of like, oh, I'm so enthusiastic about this guy and his political leader being elected, but from the point of view of like, maybe there's something he's saying, having just won an election that nobody expected him to win, that people on the left need to take into account so that by the time the next election comes around, you've learned the lessons, you're addressing people's concerns, and now you can come in with your message of, you know, how do we make America work for the working person? Like, that's to me the left-wing message. How to get America working for the working person. That's right. We'll get you back to the interview in a minute, but first... Oh, fuck you. Hold on. They were talking about the working person. They reminded me of my awesome, awesome graph showing America's going fucking awesome for the... Well, fucking awesome is exaggeration. Going decent for the working person. Yeah. Household debt as a percentage of GDP is, um, is going down now. In order for this to be more meaningful, you'd probably want to disaggregate it because it wouldn't surprise me if, if a lot of boomers' household debt was going down, but a lot of young people's household debt was going up. Um, but the boomers' debt is going down more by the young people is going up. So it shows that it's going down in total when really young people are taking out more debt. Um, and then same thing would apply to this, but we have way more excess savings. And I, I mean, you can see it spike in 2020 because it's stimulus money, obviously. So. The correct lesson that the left should have learned from Donald Trump was normal Americans that don't follow politics as closely as people like I do, you know, have five newspaper subscriptions, look at the polls every day, talk to donors, all that kind of stuff. 
normal people don't think the system is working for them and they want to break it if you really want to get down to it. Mm -hmm. And instead, we took this, we believe this really comforting lie that half the country was lost and not worth talking to and they were all racists and they were disposable and we stopped even imagining a way to live with one another. There's no future for the Democratic Party where we don't get goddamn serious about listening to the people that don't have faith in the system and earning their trust. And so much of that starts with the conversation and we are failing. This is why Biden is losing. It's not that Biden himself does not stand for this stuff. I actually think he's been a really good president. But the culture of the Democratic Party is so elitist and arrogant and unwilling to listen to ideas that we don't agree with and treating half the country like they are assholes. Like, this is not a formula for a democracy to survive. Do you know, I, I was reading this. I think it might have been you that said it, or it came up in conversation that the number one predictor for a marriage failing is not infidelity, it's not arguments. It's none of those things. It's contempt. That's right. And when I see, and it's not just progressives here, but also progressives in the UK, the contempt that they have for working class people, and let's be <laughs> blunt about it, particularly in the UK, and I'm sure over here, white working class people, the way they talk about them, the way they address them, they're rednecks, they're stupid, they're racist, they're... And then they go, oh, why didn't you vote for us? <laughs> <laughs> like there's some dumb animal to manipulate. It's, it's insulting. So let me tell you what changed my mind on this. Uh -huh. Like the big reason, the thing that changed my paradigm on this was running for office because it gets you off of fucking Twitter and out there in the real world where you've got to go knock on doors and just talk to normal people. And it's like, oh shit, the stuff we're talking about on Twitter is not what they believe. So I think there's... I think there is a lot of theory crafting in progressive spaces where they've got a lot of academic ideas about how elections and how power works. And I think it's fundamentally divorced from reality. Now, to be fair, the Democratic Party has been really poor at bringing younger people in and showing them how our system works, how NGP works, how canvassing works, how data works, how, you know, get out the vote works, like bread and butter elections. All Gen Z know is how Twitter works. Stuff. And that is very much a generational institutional failure. But at the same time, like these people are not showing up. There's every single opportunity to do that. So go out there in the real world, actually talk to the voters you want to represent. Why would I do that when I don't know how that works, but I know how I know how Twitch and YouTube work? And I think we can move forward. Because I think what a lot of people are frustrated about with the left and progressives in general is focusing on culture. That's right. And actually not talking about the things like you touched on before that actually really matter, which is economics. That's right. The fact that Bro, people- the, the for gap between real, we when are we getting progressives? to read about alternative monetary policy regimes. I want all the stupid all the stupid culture war shit to, to be replaced with heated debates over nominal GDP targeting. That's what I want. That's my dream world. Rich and poor. I will make it happen. I will make it ha I will make it I will there's no way to make it happen because it's way it's super fucking boring. There's no way you can make people care about nominal GDP targeting. I try. People don't care. People don't care. By the way that reminds me there's this nominal GDP targeting shirt that I really want to buy. It's widening. It seems that you know corporations are becoming, particularly big multinational corporations, are becoming more and more powerful. Mm. Governments are more in hock to these corporations. This is what the left should be doing. They should be challenging these. This hundred percent. I think we don't understand how easy we could have it on I the left this. if we stopped this nonsense and we were a party that unapologetically stood for all those things for working class people. I think we would take the country for two generations, and we just can't. So, do you think part of the reason for that, Brianna, is? And please correct me if I'm sure. wrong. This is just stuff people say. I don't know if it's true. I'm just curious to explore it with you. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I am a virgin looking for hentai. Um, I think you clicked on a wrong stream, buddy. I hate to break it to you. Uh, the elite of the Democratic Party, it's probably true of the Republican Party to a large extent, but you sort of, you'd expect that more, is in hock to the big corporations, yeah. the big tech. The, the, they're all working, colluding together. So. I guess, what incentives do they have to, to take the correct position on all of this? I think that's, I mean, this is the problem with power. I can tell you when I ran for Congress, I spent eight hours a day in a chair fundraising, like basically calling for money from my campaign. And, you know, it's, it's, you are very beholden to the donors that bring you money. This is why a policy I believe in is public financing of elections. We have that in the be, UK. Does it work for y'all? Better than here. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. It's like something's got to change. You're right. The incentive structure is just not there. And there's, a lot of incentives for Democrats to say the right things, but when the votes come up on the House floor, not to not Jehovah do the right Witness. things. So I, in my estimation, y'all may not agree with it. I still think we're better than the Republicans, but I think until that changes, people are not going to change their assessment of us. 
And Brianna, you said that you think Joe Biden has been a good president. Yeah. And I know there's going to be a lot of people in the comments who are going to be, shall we say, politely disagreeing. Sure. OK, why is it that you think he's been a good president? So you talked about the value of institutions. I think at the end of the day, something I really value is our Justice Department working normally. Um, you know, <laughs> I value our... So, you know, it's all rigged against having Trump. a clear chain of command. You know, I don't know if you remember, but the State Department was changing hands. Rex Tillerson saying he had no faith. You had generals resigning under Trump. You had Trump trying to blow up NATO, something I assume you don't agree with. You know, there is a, a path to normalcy for the United States and liberalism, like lowercase liberalism and democracy. Then my estimation, I think Joe Biden stands better for than the competition. Um, I don't mean to offend anyone in the audience, but it's really scary to me how much some of the Republican rhetoric is reflecting Vladimir Putin's talking points. Now, parties... You write them back, right? They're probably pretty lonely. You gotta write them back, right? My left versus right politics end at the United States border. I am an American, and I think Joe Biden has been so much better for our national security than Trump has been. Well, that's interesting because uh, I was actually, maybe it's a good opportunity before I mm -hmm. jump in for you to lay out some more of the domestic policies that you're happy about, because I, I, my personal view, and we can get into this, particularly what you said about NATO, I actually don't think that that's what Donald Trump was doing. Mm -hmm. I think he was trying to get NATO to pay its own way. You don't think Trump will blow out NATO if he's reelected? My sense of what he was doing, you mentioned about the past, sure. was he was trying to get the NATO member countries to pay their fair share mm -hmm. so that NATO would be stronger, so that NATO would not be so reliant on the United States. And I thought that was, he warned Germany about taking Russian energy, he warned them about paying paying their fair share, and I think he's been proven entirely right. The one he, I think that, to be fair, I think this was after he left office, but I'm pretty sure he did, I'm pretty sure he did say that he would, he wanted to withdraw from NATO. Trump, uh, withdraw, NATO. pretty sure he did say that after he left office. Now, Donald Trump says he won't quit NATO if you're at pace with U.S. will 100% remain in NATO on its leadership so long as European countries play fair. I'm repeatedly threatened to leave the alliance. Oh, well, President. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I was like, he arrived late. <laughs> Grave consequences. Allies do not quickly ramp up their spending. The U.S. could go our own way. <laughs> Should say this for later. So the one area of this that I feel that I, I do understand somewhat is the geopolitical dimension. I think Joe Biden's been a disaster. Really? His pullout from Afghanistan signaled tremendous weakness, which is, I think, why you end up with Ukraine being invaded afterwards as well. So on the geopolitics, I wouldn't agree with you, actually. I, I think Joe, Joe Biden has been Can very... Can we go one at a time yeah, through these? Yeah, yeah, this is so Afghanistan. How long have we been in Afghanistan? For 20 years, sure. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do the thing. I know a lot of people on the left like to say, oh, Donald Trump agreed to this and then Joe Biden just executed. Fuck that. You know, Joe Biden's our president. He made the call. Are we supposed to... Like, I did not support us invading Afghanistan the way no. that George Bush did it. I literally led protests mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. That was a situation with the Taliban there poised to take over. We had United States troops there for, what, 20 years mm -hmm. basically keeping this? Are we supposed to keep them there forever? I mean, what are the alternatives? So w what I'm saying is, is not so much... Uh Look, I agree with you. We should, the United States would have been better off destroying Al Qaeda without staying 100%. there forever, right? Uh, the Taliban would always come back anyway. However, the way the pullout was done is, yeah. is the issue. Sure. It signaled that America, it wasn't that America left, it's that America abandoned its allies. I hear what you're saying. And that's. <laughs> Are we going to talk about how Trump abandoned the Kurds in Syria, right? Um, to, yeah. <laughs> Trump literally. Um, it's my webcam. My webcam is lying in my end. Hopefully it's not on your end. Trump literally abandoned the Kurds in Syria, right? To Turkish attack. <laughs> sent a message. Yeah. It sent a message that resonated around the world. The word that America gives you is not worth the paper that it's written on. There's, there's and also, uh, fucking, uh, again, 
Iran attacked Saudi Arabia and Trump did nothing about it. And they say Trump or Biden in America. America. And when you pull out on that basis, yes. what you signal to others is, well, are we at Taiwan's ally? Sure. Are we Ukraine's ally? Are, or are we just saying that? And but, I know, but Biden's been really good on Ukraine. He's been giving Ukraine a shit ton of aid and Republicans are the one opposing it. Now, I don't know if Trump necessarily opposes it because Trump's position is kind of ambiguous. Do we have the resolve to back our allies when push comes to shove? And a what's military unit. What the hell is what? this? Parallel. What the fuck? Dude, are you drunk? I think you're drunk right now, Hassan's bookshelf. What the fuck is this shit? This is a cult to consciousness. Her parallels between children of God's sex cult in the U.S. military. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Is this just... I mean, the military is cult-like. <laughs> it kind of needed to be cult-like. It's born in the U.S. military cult. Hit, unique implementing system. I think... I can't tell what you're saying. You're drunk right now, dude happened consistently has been, whether that's Afghanistan, whether that's Ukraine, probably Taiwan also, is the United States talks a good game. That's right. But it doesn't actually do the things it needs to do. So on the geopolitics sure. of it, well, my uh, own Can view. I respond to yeah, that, actually? Yeah, of course. So I really, I think that is very fair criticism. It broke my heart to see the Taliban fl flag flying over a United States airstrip as that happened. Anyone that loves our country and loves democracy and loves Western values, that was a really hard day. Taliban is resistance the same time, to U.S. imperialism. You know, I think if you're talking about why is the United States perceived as weaker than we were, there have been a lot of really good democratic policies. I think um, Operation Infinite Resolve and the fight against ISIS in the Obama years was excellent. We've never... Doesn't every military... I don't... I mean, maybe the U.S. military is bad at it somehow, but, like, doesn't every... I mean, every military is pretty, like, top-down command-like structure. It's kind of essential for a military. ...had a national conversation about how aggressive and excellent Obama was at taking on ISIS and pushing back on this. So I think if you look at things like Ukraine directionally, what in my view makes us weak is when the Republicans well, why are holding not change up these it? I don't know if the military really works any other way. ...bills to provide them arms. I think that is a massive error in judgment. So you look at who voted for what, and I think the Democrats, like I don't have these numbers memorized, overwhelmingly voted for this and barely passed with Republican oh, support. Oh, sure, but, but so, that, that, Brianna, that isn't my argument. Sure. Since we're on this, let's sure, just let's close, close let's this loop. Uh, I, 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 as you know, a big, big supporter of us supporting Ukraine. That's at least right. In the beginning, as am I. Right. What, what we're doing now is not supporting Ukraine. How do you feel? What do you mean? What we are doing now is giving them just enough support so they can continue fighting. Correct. But they're not going to win. That's right. They're not going to get the outcome they want. I agree. And the America isn't going to get the outcome they want. I agree. What, it, what the situation needed and um, still needs is somebody who is prepared to simultaneously carry a big stick. <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily agree. I mean, I don't think Ukraine's quote unquote going to win, but like, I don't know if we, I mean, I mean, I don't like Ukraine probably recognizes it's not going to get everything back too, right? And do a deal at the same time. Ultimately, this is how this is going to end. And what you, you must care for U.S. servicemen. I agree. Either but. someone who's going to say, either we do a deal on the basis of what's happening on the ground right now, which means sadly, Russia. We aren't giving them enough for them to win. I mean, that's true. A lot of us can say Republicans out, but... She's going to get pieces of Ukraine that it didn't have. Hold on, I... This is how this is going to end. And what you need is someone who's going to say, either we do a deal on the basis of what's happening on the ground right now, which means, sadly, Russia is going to get pieces of Ukraine that it didn't have before, in exchange for Ukraine having long-term security. And if you, Vladimir Putin, are not going to sign this, then I am going to give the Ukrainians everything. That's what the president should be doing. And I personally think Donald Trump is far more likely to say that than Joe well, Biden. However, let's just let's just agree to disagree. Can, can I just agree sure. with yeah, that? Sure. I think okay. that's really well said. Yeah. You know, we've gotten into this dynamic where we want to make Ukraine just strong enough that they can never lose, but not strong enough that they can never win. Now, I'm not a general. I can't appraise if like giving them air support is going to lead to World War Three or not. But I think that more needs to be done. Like just giving them what is it, the hundred not drunk, I type with difficulty, but you usually type better than this. <laughs> 32 millimeter shells to like hit Russian, um, you know, uh, barricades. Like doing this forever is not going to let them win the war. We've just decided this lukewarm support. So I think your assessment of this is dead on. I guess my point is, is on that issue is I don't think it's the Democrats are going all out for Ukraine and the Republicans are stopping it. It's either. more like Democrats are doing a terrible job and the Republicans are torn. There's a part of the Republican Party that wants Ukraine to win and would help much more than they're currently doing. Sure. And there's, there's the other 
you know, I don't know if there's many Republicans that want to help Ukraine more than the Democrats do. The woke right, so to speak, who who are they're anti-Ukraine because they're anti-Western elites. That's kind of their worldview. Do you think they're compromised in some way by Russia? No, I think they're compromised by the derangement. You know, they've been staring into the abyss. Sure. They've been looking into the progressive abyss for so long. They're now thinking like progressives in their head in many ways. I hear what you're saying. I mean, I guess I'm just old enough to remember when we were able to stick together on national security issues. Mm, I hope that comes back. I, I do too. Yeah. I think in American history, militias often had elected officers. Uh, but I think this kind of died during okay. Yeah, because those were militias. We have a much more organized military Let's now. Let's that because I feel like ahead, we're, we're moving away from the core of, of, uh, of the things we've been talking about. You go ahead. Yeah, so I was going to say the one thing in moving towards domestic policy. Sure. One of the major criticisms that Republicans and ordinary people are going to have, and please explode any myths, is when it comes to the border. There's a oh, lot the of people in this country who are very upset, ordinary people, very yeah. angry. They're looking at things like People coming in undocumented. There's crime that's been spiraling. There's, you know, the fentanyl crisis. And they're thinking to themselves, what the hell is going on with my country? I fully agree with you. I am a Democrat that wants the border taken far more seriously. Like sex trafficking across our southern border is horrible. I urge you to go read stories about this. It is a nightmare. You cannot be a feminist and want the status quo on all of this. Drugs coming through. You know, I'm sure you saw the video, the viral video a while back, the woman like with her children under the barbed wire and all that. It is completely normal for a country to need a secure border. And I don't understand why Democrats don't take this exponentially more seriously. We can have a conversation about, you know, visas to let people in. We can have a very high number of people that we let in, but we got to secure the border. And I think it is eminently fail fair to say the Democrats have failed at this. And, and you say you don't. But the Republicans are the ones that blew up the bipartisan legislation, right? No, but. Uh, to me, it seems utterly perplexing because mm -hmm. it doesn't. It, you, I just look and at. And also, it. Biden did finally do that uh, asylum seeker. Uh, Biden immigrants executive order. It capped asylum seekers, right? Uh, what two hours ago? What? Oh, this is about shielding people from, yeah, deportation. Um. Well, all this stuff is new. But item. How do you spell it? Asylum. Asylum seeker. Socialists often do this. Well, I think uh, once again they act they had to fight this sort of sort of thing seem to be abandoned quite quickly. I think this is the, yeah, daily average of 2,500 migrants. And I go, I, unless you're, you've drunk the, the progressive Kool-Aid, so we just say, for want of a better word, so much that you think open borders are racist. Yeah, no human is Which was a piece in the Times, by the way. Like, oh, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> But, I, but apart from that, how how can you justify it? How can you justify it when you look at the number of fentanyl deaths in this country? Again, do you want the real answer or do you want the political Let's go, answer? Right. Here's the real answer. Democrats don't have balls to stand up to the nut jobs. That's the real answer because you get called a racist and you're afraid about losing the Latino vote. And, you know, it, it is... In can, can I just push place, back on that? Ahead, As somebody yeah. who is half Latin American, who, sure. whose mother is from Venezuela, I can guarantee you Venezuelans in this country who came here legally, sure. who pay their taxes, who work hard, just like Cubans, just like Puerto Ricans, they're even more pissed off about this because they're like, hang on a second, I jumped through all the hoops, I did all the paperwork, I paid my money, I paid my taxes, and I could have just walked in. Sure. I'm not saying I'm not, this. But I don't know if there's a really solid way to fix a lot of the immigration stuff without like legislation, and it doesn't, doesn't seem like Republicans are super willing to solve it legislatively. Yeah, they panned in pretty quickly. It's a correct assessment. It's a deeply incorrect assessment, but that's the reason for the for the fear there. Right. You know. I see. So, but isn't wouldn't that be? If we're talking about Joe Biden being a good president. Sure. Wouldn't you agree if you disagree with the, what's happening on the border that at least on that issue he's been terrible? We just tried to pass a bill that would have made Democrats oh, extremely finally, there unhappy. We go. The progressives were really upset about this bill because it gave the president things to do, like close the border in an emergency and had some of the strictest like restrict. Also, Biden. 
Biden tried to extend Title 42, right? And as Supreme Court shut it down. Elections on this. And the Republicans are the ones that defeated that bill because they wanted it to be an election issue. Now, I don't mean to be get all geeky and policy oriented, but a huge part of this is also the lack of immigration judges. We have a huge fact. Are you aware that in Boston, we actually said we're a port city. Mm -hmm. We sent our immigration judges down to the border in an emergency capacity because they can't even try cases down there. I don't care if you're on the right or the left or open borders there. We should all agree that if you come across the border, you should have a legal problem process to figure out where you need to go. We don't have the system for that. So No, I don't agree with that. Uh, Do you not? No, I don't. I'm a first generation immigrant to the UK. And my view is nobody should be coming into the country illegally. Sure. Right. So be, we shouldn't though? be sending Boston oh, immigration we, we, judges. I mean, well, asylum seekers are legal. I think under international law, they have to be legal. It's debated whether or not you can even cap asylum seekers. But um, yeah. <laughs> to the south because they shouldn't be necessary because the border should be closed. That's what I'm saying. I think, I think that's what most people sure. expect, really. I, look, I want this situation handled. I will vote for it. I would vote for any candidate that took that seriously. It's a mess. Democrats have our head on the sands on this. This could make us lose the election if we don't wake the fuck up and take it very seriously. And there's a leftist argument for this. There's a leftist argument for doing all of this. Like it's, there's so much crime and, and, and trauma that happens by these cartels doing this stuff. The fentanyl crisis is a billion times worse because of this. There's no excuse for this. Okay, so just carrying down the thread then, give us some, some things you think Joe Biden has done that have actually been good. Domestically, let's say. I think the inflation situation, the United, like every country in the entire world is dealing with inflation. Yep. Of course. And I think that we've actually gotten the United States economy much further back on track. I think Thanks. inflation has come down much better compared to the rest of the world. I think on coronavirus, um, I think people forget just how much like getting vaccines out to people was mismanaged under Donald Trump. He did an A plus job at getting that system like in place and getting vaccines available for people. Um, reopening schools, I think he did a really good job on that. So I think there's a lot of domestic policies actually excelled at. So I'm going to ask you a question, Please. which is not... It's not particularly pleasant, but it needs to be said. Go for it. I very much admire you for coming on the show, Brianna. Sure. And I very much admire <laughs> you for taking tough questions, fielding them, and dealing with them in the spirit that they're meant. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of other people on maybe that side of the argument or the Democrats strike me as weak, if I'm being blunt. If, yeah. if your biggest fear is being called a racist sure. or being said that you're whatever else, then you shouldn't be anywhere near power. I'm sorry. You're a leader. You're there to make tough decisions, and people are going to say nasty things about you. Tough. You you want you want the position. You've got to deal with that. This is why I've been in progressive politics for the last decade. I wanted a Democratic Party with some balls that would stand up on all these things. The problem is the progressive power base has lost their goddamn minds. So where the fuck are you going to go? You've got the insurgent side of it that's trying to push the Democratic Party to actually get serious about public policy. I believe it. Like universal health care. The American health care system is completely broken. I had a theory of change that if we were out there and we pushed the traditional corporate Democrats hard from the progressive side, that that would get us to better public policy. The problem is the progressive left is so crazy nowadays, they're worse than the corporate Democrats. So we've got to turn this whole ship around. And is that possible, though? I don't know. I don't think it's likely, to be really honest with you. So what what does the future look like? <sighs> I don't know. I feel like a lot of the... I feel like as long as we have liberals standing up for liberal principles, we'll be all right. Hey, man, there might be some progressive nut jobs, but again, I don't think we'll... I think we'll be all right. I think, I think, I think, we'll, I think we'll turn out okay. <laughs> the border stuff... Um, should really have it near near it me, uh, mega migrant receiving facilities and close like with cities comfort housing education migrant health facilities recreation blah 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 and farms for migrants where they are safe from cartel and climate in our interview with the brilliant Tim Urban he said um I think oops I didn't mean to pin that uh, the argument against that would be like that's just going to encourage illegal immigration right in there that would be hugely expensive Probably not even that big of a benefit. Oh, another sponsor. Twenty dollars if you can get an egg in tw in thirty seconds. Thirty seconds starting when? Fuck! I can get an egg. Hold on.
that 30 seconds? I kind of doubt that that was 30 seconds. Sorry, time's up, bro. Wait, I, I was back before you said time's up. I kind of doubt I was under 30 seconds, so. But. Wait, now I just have this fucking egg. Well, whatever. <laughs> I need to put this somewhere where it's not going to fall and also where I'm not going to forget that it's here. <laughs> My hope in speaking up is I see a lot well, of thanks people for giving me the opportunity. DMs and they say, Brianna, I agree with you. And my hope is if enough people like me stand up and we'll start getting real about this stuff, we can start pushing the crazies out and get the Democratic Party Have a good day too. on a path that makes sense. I don't think that's likely. I think there's a flip a coin. We're going to see who wins this election. Is it going to be Joe Biden or, um, you know, uh, or Donald Trump? And from there, we are going to be in the wilderness without power if we lose. And we're going to find a new version of the Democratic Party. I don't know if that's going to be a better version of the Democratic I'm going Party. to follow you, Legend. Thank you, man. Party. So, well, yeah. let, let me say something to you, but through you to some of the people that follow you that might be. The follow is worth it, even if I didn't get the egg in time. Interested. I really believe, you know, I was in Australia recently and I was at a, I was invited to a dinner where there were a lot of people who were influential in Australia. And there were people from both sides of politics there. And, and the person who invited us, uh, he said, look, I don't want the other party to be elected. That's right. But at some point they will be. Yeah. And I want them to be the very best possible party for Australia. That's right. Best possible government for Australia. And in that spirit, my view is the only way that the left is actually going to start to have a good impact on society is when, if, when Donald Trump gets elected again, which I, I suspect he will be. Ooh. You don't agree? And I may well be wrong. I think it's going to be close. I think I see data and I think I have a perspective on the state efforts that probably informs my And you, you're probably much better informed about it than, mm -hmm. than I am. I'm just operating on a general sentiment kind sure. of basis. But I guess what I'm saying is the mistake that was made in 2016, which you articulated so well, was a failure to take seriously the concerns of the ordinary American. That's right. If Donald Trump is elected again, my greatest fear is that instead of doing that instead of learning the lesson and going, okay, what are we not listening to? Is it immigration? Okay, we've got to change our position on immigration. Is it foreign policy? Okay, we've got, to, we've got to adjust. My worry, and I know this is Francis' worry too, because we talk about it all this time, is if Donald Trump is reelected, you're going to see a progressive meltdown on the scale that's going to dwarf that's right. 2016, that's right. which will only make the country worse and the left that's way right. more unelectable. Because they don't believe in democracy, fundamentally. Look right. at the fringe free Palestine people. There's some people in that movement that genuinely see scenes of horror out of Gaza. Intifada and revolution. And I respect that. <laughs> mm -hmm. At the same time, there are a lot of people in that movement that want democracy and America dead. Well, they hate yeah. America. Yeah, they do. They hate our own country. They do. Yeah. When did it become like inappropriate to be on the left and say you love your country and you respect your police officers and your teachers? You respect someone. Well, it's not how I feel. Yeah. And, you know, it's, we've got to confront this illiberalism that is just strangling the Democratic true, Party. True, true. We've got to get more comfortable with free speech and talking to people that disagree with us. We need to get much more serious about public policy because we're not. It's, it's so true. And it's, it's genuinely sad to see what's happening. Yeah. to the left. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who I know, and look, I'm, I'm friends with some of them on the right. They're like, ha ha, look at them, blah, blah, blah. Aren't they this? Aren't they that? And you go, I don't think you understand what is happening to the very fabric of our society. That's right. That's right. And if this side are going crazy, as you're putting it, what's happening to our society as a whole? That's right. And what's happening to your side? Because I'm telling you something else. Your side isn't being great either. And the, the moral decay is happening in a similar, albeit different way at the same time. I agree. I mean, look, I, I feel like I have extreme problems with MAGA, right? Mm -hmm. I think in many ways, this is an anti-democratic movement as well. So you know, just because I'm talking about the left today, this is my own side. Like, it's not surprising to you that I don't like the Republicans and don't agree with their policies, right? But I think you're really right. This is about the fabric of the country coming apart. I think you're seeing this in the UK to a lesser Maggie's degree. Maggie's sweating now. But, you know, like your politics tend to follow our own. So yeah, yeah. we've got to confront this head on. And we download your, your crap uh, very, very readily in the UK. <laughs> um, I suppose one of the things that I was interested in exploring, Brianna, with you as well, is you mentioned when we were talking about you potentially coming on the show that there's probably a lot of areas that we disagree about. Sure. Not you disagree with Republicans about, but we're obviously not Republicans. So what do you think that is? I'm keen to find that out. Well, I, I want to be polite. I think You don't need to, you be, don't need to be polite. I think we're generally speaking, <laughs> I think generally speaking, when I watch your stuff, I think you hold the right and the left to two different standards. And I think you're a little too tough on the left. <laughs> but I understand it because I spend more time. But people are going to say that right. about you now. This they is the do. thing. That's fine. Uh, people will, will, the progressives will call you right wing or whatever. And they don't. I don't know if voting is a waste of time in your case. Uh, not really. I mean, 
waste it's not it doesn't take that much time to vote it, voting is probably not the only thing that you should be doing but uh, i think it's a waste of time uh i think voting has has effects especially in local shit you're criticizing the left you're doing that out of a place of let's get our shit together right i want our society to get its shit together also north carolina is a not really a swing state but there's a chance it'll go blue do you mail in then no i'm i vote regularly well i will this is gonna be the first election i vote in so because sure. the one unique experience that I have that most people don't have is I've lived outside of this That's society. Right. I was born outside of this society. And I can tell you people. In I Russia, mean, yes, I mail in and I mail in 10 fake ballots for Joe Biden. People in China are not having debates on TV about fucking pronouns. That's right. Right. And the more time we spend on that, the less time we spend realizing that we live in a geopolitical battle of civilizations and we are sliding backwards. That's right. So look, if I have a 5% disagreement with you about pronouns, like, let's be really clear here. You are on the side of democracy and liberalism. And I think something I appreciate about you is really talking about the threat of terrorism in very, very clear terms. I think that sometimes in this country, when we think about Islam, it's oh, the wait. westernized, like liberal professor version of it. And I think you're not really thinking about it through I didn't like all the caps. Like what is happening in Syria or what ISIS is doing or you know, Iran and the, the, the Cold War with Saudi Arabia. So I think what I appreciate about you is I think you talk about this in really clear moral terms. And I wish we could have a better um, conversation about that in this country. I think speaking like about learning the wrong lessons, I think America learned a lot of the wrong lessons for 9-11 mm -hmm. and George Bush because you know, we were attacked. That was something we needed to take seriously. But the lesson we took from that is because his leadership and decisions were so poor and got us into two wars that did not address terrorism. It created terrorism. We have two generations of Americans now that don't think the United States military can accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. That is false. We need to be an arsenal of democracy for the world. And I think I want to play my role in getting us there. Well, that's, that's great. Uh, but come back with me to what you think we might disagree about, because one of the things you mentioned was the trans issue. Sure. Um, and my, well, obviously we all think this about our own position, but my, my view is I, for Francis and I have taken a pretty, <laughs> sensible position on oh, it a, okay. to have a broad range of perspectives on. We had uh, a trans woman on the show very early, the first person with whom we raised this issue, who absolutely hates our guts now and whatever. Who is uh, it? Can India you say? Willoughby. <laughs> oh, okay. And we, we had... She's a friend. I like her a lot. And we had other people who had different perspectives, everyone from Buck Angel, who I know you know, yeah. to people who are very critical of certain things. And I thought that their criticisms in some ways were was excessive, but in other ways really important. Sure. And the place I think we've both landed in is the place kind of to some extent we started in, which is adults should be able to do what they want. Great. Children, however, are not capable of making informed decisions about the future because they're children. Sure. And should therefore be protected from medicalization. Sure. And there's quite a lot of evidence that a lot of children who go down the transgender path are actually not transgender at all. They're either gay or they're autistic or both yeah. or bullied or whatever. And I don't think cutting bits off those children is, is the right position. To be clear, you can't get surgery until you're well, 18, as I understand yeah. it. Uh, Cut the you can get off. puberty block. The leftist you follow this is it a leftist you follow this woo person? Uh, I don't really, I don't keep up around with that much, but this seemed interesting to me. Uh, is it a left? What do you mean? Is it a leftist? Okay. Young puberty, blockers. right? That's yeah. pretty. But that's not cutting. That, that's correct. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Let's let's take that. Uh, medicalizing sure. confused children is something I'm against. So look, this is going to get me canceled by trans Twitter, but something has changed in the last ten years is we've really redefined who is trans, right? Yeah. It used to be people that medically transitioned. You went through the Benjamins, and then there were the WPATH standards. Mm -hmm. And some reasonable stuff. Go read it. Go to a therapist for three months. Get on hormones. Have real life experience out there. Get surgery like a year later, right? Not a crazy like gauntlet to go down. We've expanded all of these things in really extreme ways now. Mm -hmm. There are people in the trans movement that, hand to God, really believe in self-ID. Like, you should just be able to say, I'm this gender, and that has legal consequences for what spaces you like can that. enter. Yeah, this is crazy. As in leftist influencer, she probably is a Zionist liberal, see, though. Right? Well, I mean, she is a liberal. I don't understand. I don't necessarily think she's a... It depends on your definition of Zionism. And this non-binary stuff. I have friends that are non-binary. I think they're going through something real. They're in the W path, but they're going through something different than people who medically transition. So to come back to your point about children, if you are adding all of that onto who is considered trans, of course there are going to be some of those children that are non-binary or just don't like the gender role or confused or gay, that transition is not going to serve them. 
So, you know, I personally have the opinion that if you look at the science here, it is not particularly conclusive one way or another. We need to double down on the studies we're doing. We need to really make a better pathway to serve those children. And I do want more of them filtered out. So would you agree with me then that until we have the rock solid evidence, we shouldn't be transitioning kids? I think I wouldn't agree with you there because I personally know so many people that are such good friends of mine that mm -hmm. this same. Well, you should probably, if you, the problem is he's using the word transition here. That means different things. It can mean, it can literally just mean being on puberty blockers or it can mean chopping bits off, right? I think puberty blockers are probably fine. Although you should probably, I, I think the Scandinavian countries do this. Where like if you're transitioning as a child, you kind of have to participate in like some of these long-term studies. I think that's probably something that we should do. Like if you're going to do uh, hormones or anything, you should probably be in a long-term study. So we know the effects of it. In their life. But what I think would help is progressives are not having an honest conversation with parents. And I am not sure gender clinics are either. They are saying things like, your child is going to suicide if you don't do this really life-altering thing. I One of Zionist was what U.S. continuing to send Iron Dome uh, to the Zionist entity. I, no, I think Iron sending Iron Dome stuff to Israel does not make you a Zionist. No, I would not say so. The Iron Dome was literally strictly defensive. I don't think that's a good message. I think we need to be talking to parents with more respect about all of this. One of the things I actually have a deep level of empathy for a lot of trans people, and trans people have spoken to both of us about it and me individually and all the rest of it is, you know, it's tough. It's tough dealing with gender dysphoria. It's sure. really hard. It's sure. really hard. You go through all the, you know, you go through the processes, you take the meds, you go through everyone else. And then most people just want to get on with their lives. That's right. They just want to live their lives. They want to do their jobs. They want to have their friends, their families. And that's it. And they've been politicized now. That's right. And, you know, every, like, the, the, one person said to me, like, I just feel like I'm being asked to represent all the trans people. I am just a person. That's right. And I just want you to leave me alone. That's right. That, it was this way 10 years ago. Yeah. It was this way 20 years mm -hmm. ago. It's, um, it's really been, uh, in my view, a real disaster for trans rights to redefine it from a nonpartisan medical issue to this leftist fringe identity issue mm. where you're trying to destroy the idea of gender itself. Now, I want to be really clear. If someone's non-binary, I will do my best. I will call them by the pronouns that they want because I'm not a jackass. But that doesn't mean I agree with this idea of destroying gender in the public commons. That's not something I support. So, you know, I think the truth is we need to be able to have a discussion. And I think a lot of trans people that actually transition have been ironically censored from their own civil rights movement. Okay. The discussion is the important part. And this is where the, the progressive taboos, and they really are progressive taboos, yeah. they have to be broken apart. I agree. We have to be able to talk about the data, the evidence, without, you know, you're denying trans people's ex existence and all of this other yeah. nonsense. I agree. Got made up. Did you read um, Emily? Well, justify this defense for genocide doing. States that occupy Palestinian territories and cannot accept a one-state solution with equal rights and no Jewish supremacy. Well, justify this defense for genocide. You, what? what are you telling me to justify I can justify Israel's actions we could do the, the whole thing right now I'm not really interested in doing that right now but um, I don't think the Iron Dome is like the Iron Dome literally shoots down missiles that go to Israeli civilian areas right um, I mean to some extent military installations too, but most of the missiles coming from Gaza are not aimed at military installations, they're aimed at civilian populations. And the Iron Dome just shoots them down. How can you justify sending defense for that state? Because I don't think Israeli civilians should die. And the Iron Dome saves civilian lives. Blazlons, Blazlons, I don't know how you say it. It was a really great piece in the New, they put, what? New York Times called the Battle, Battle for... I mean, Israel's not for. Um, they can afford a lot of their own stuff but the iron dome is pretty expensive uh, gender clinics or something it's about children transition but my only point here is that saying that we should send iron dome missiles to israel does not make you a zionist necessarily I, I was so upset about this because it was such a deeply reported um why then not buy i don't know it's expensive and we feel like we want to maintain good relations with israel i don't really i don't really care about arguing this right now like oh, my only point here is saying that sending defensive weapons to israel does not necessarily make you a zionist amazing piece that was overwhelmingly pro-trans and was talking about the history of children transitioning and what the reality was in these gender clinics and the pros of it and the cons of it 
And what did trans Twitter do from open discussion from a reporter that was very, very It does very you support state not buying, not but U.S. tax They canceled her. They went after her in very personal true. ways. She had to step Me when spending multiplier. away from Twitter. It was absolute hell for her. If trans people cannot even let the New York Times write an article that is pro-trans healthcare and act like adults, I don't know how they're going to win over normal people. Brianna, do they want to win over normal people? That's probably not. I think some do. I don't think a lot of the new ones do. No. No. And to me, that's that's the real problem. They're more interested in being right than winning people over. I agree. And There's when, a lot of that going around, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. And when you're in that position, I mean, that's that's a pretty terrible position to be in for everybody. I agree. It's, it's so discouraging. I mean, it's... For me, I'm 46. I remember when trans was Jerry Springer in this country. <laughs> I don't know if you know who that was. And yep, to think yep. about that as... Jerry, Jerry. Jerry. Yeah. To think about that era as just a healthier discussion. That's It's terrifying. To it's amazing about. how we live in a world where Jerry Springer was a healthier <laughs> discussion. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Just yeah, bring about 10 wrong. crazies onto the stage and yeah. make them fight. That was yeah. healthy. Yeah, and this then it got broken up. <laughs> this is what I was thinking about. Like in the Jerry Springer era, like a trans woman being married to a man was salacious. And today mm. it's boring because yeah. half of trans Twitter is in their polycule with five non-binary people. Like it's, yeah. it's insane. So you mentioned the, the election that's obviously mm -hmm. looming in the future. You seem to think it's going to be close. You don't yeah. know. You, you're not making a call either way. Well, let me tell you why. So um, elections do not come down to vibes. Mm -hmm. They come down to get out the vote. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by get out the vote is you build a relational database of contacts that you have from canvassing or relational organizing, which is um, you literally pay people to go contact 100 of their friends on Facebook and make sure they'll get out and vote. And the Democrats' data strategy this time around has actually been pretty good. So when I'm looking at the infrastructure we are building for the ground game in these swing states, I actually feel pretty positive about it. So um, your know, messaging, I think I would give a D minus to. Uh, Joe Biden's ability to go out and make a coherent vision for the country, I would give an F to. But these... Really an F? I think Joe Biden's done a decent job at that. I mean, what, no matter what he fucking says, Republicans fucking twist it into fucking nonsense anyway. But um, I don't know, I think he's done a pretty good job at Shit. Didn't you see the State of the Union address? The State of the Union address is pretty good. So you do not have socialized health care, but they do, but they have, and you buy them the Iron Dome tech. Israel's a smaller country. They um I mean again, also like we do it to maintain good relations with Israel. It's not just necessarily because Israel can't afford it. I'm sure Israel probably could afford it if they really needed to, but it is expensive and we want to have good relations with Israel. My only point was that sending the Iron Dome to Israel does not make you a Zionist per se. doesn't necessarily do that. Um, it, may, it probably makes you more likely that you're a Zionist, but it, it doesn't automatically make you a Zionist or anything. That was my only point. Like bread and butter tools to win an election, I actually think we're doing much better. And also, it's a spending multiplier, dude. You say, like, U.S. taxpayer giving money to Israel. It's not really what happens. What happens is U.S. taxpayer money goes to Lockheed Martin, which is U.S. jobs. Like, it's a, it's a jobs program. It goes to U.S. It goes to people in the U.S. who design the shit. Sound like a gullible, naive person. Okay, well, what did I say that was gullible or naive? And Trump is. Brianna, I've got to ask this question. Sure. He's too old, isn't he? Yeah. This is why I didn't vote for him in the primary, like in 2020. But what is going on when we have Trump or Biden? What is going on with the, with, with the system? You've got this amazing Do you country. Think I can defend this. One of my closest friends, Cenk Uger, ran for president because he saw this and believes Biden can't win. So I, I can't defend it. I mean, I've been very open. I wish he had dropped out and let someone else be the standard pair. He didn't. And it's a really big risk. And now it's too late to do anything. To, who would you rather have run in so y'all probably don't like her, but Elizabeth Warren, she's my senator in Massachusetts. I think she is amazing. She's the best in-person politician I've ever seen. Works a room, really good policy. I would love to see her as president. I don't know why you say we, we probably wouldn't like her. We're big fans of Native well, American rights. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that because... I had to say that. Fair, Come on. fair enough. She is, you know, she's gotten into some gender controversies, I think yeah. I would say. And yeah, no, I, I think that actually, if you listen to some of the stuff that she says about economics, um, some some of it I don't agree with. Some of it I agree with. Yeah. You know, uh, and she's not. She's definitely not one of these crazy. She, she's. I'm not sure if she's the. When are we going to get sensible progressive economics on the left? When are we going to get 
people advocating for a land value tax and destination-based cash flow tax or Bradford X tax or a value added tax or any number of these more efficient taxes than a than just taxing unrealized gains in a wealth tax. Like what? The inspirational <laughs> candidate that we'd, we'd all hope for. Uh, Why is this shit? But no, oh, I, shit. Okay, how about well, Rokano? Do you know Rokano? I'm familiar, yeah. Rokano is a really good guy. Yeah. Uh, really smart, really policy focused, very focused. I would I think he would be an excellent president. Um, yeah, we've got talent in the party. I mm. think the the problem is, and the Republicans have I think some statement you made about labels attached to Israel, small country, for example. I mean, I'm just saying, in comparison, Israel is obviously a lot smaller to uh, than the U.S. Israel obviously is kind of the regional superpower, right? Because there's a way more developed economy, and its GDP is probably. Um, I would guess that Israel's GDP is higher than Egypt. Uh, what is it? Five hundred billion. Yeah, it's a little higher. And I imagine Egypt is like the highest in the region. Um, I don't count Turkey. And I mean, Israel has less people, so its GDP per capita is going to be a lot high. Yeah. I don't know what uh, Iraq's going to be. Well, how high is Saudi Arabia? Oh, Saudi Arabia is bigger. That kind of makes sense, though, because the oil and shit and U.S. support. Yeah. To have this issue, too, there's a seniority system. So it's like, whose turn is it? Right. You yeah. know, whose favors can I call in? So then you eventually end up with a bunch of old people. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, on that happy note, uh, why don't we uh, wrap up? We'll go to locals for questions from our audience. But before we do, Brianna, the last question, as you know, we always ask is, what's the one thing we're not talking about that we should be? Before Brianna answers a final question. Oh, another ad. At the after October 7th, this is an even worse. What argument does the right make that you agree with? Okay, this is bonus content. Don't care. It's the one th after October 7th. This isn't even about equality. Make a correlation to it. S what? S-I-E? What? Uh, to its capacity to buy. What does this have to do with them not being able to still buy from the U.S.? Obviously, GDP is going to correspond pretty closely to what they can afford to buy, considering GDP is the measure of the tax base. GDP is literally the measure of how big the tax base of a country is. So obviously that's going to track pretty closely what they can afford to buy. But um, I don't, the Iron Dome is, is expensive. I'm sure Israel probably theoretically could afford to buy the Iron Dome. But like, again, it, it's just, um, I don't really know why we would make them pay that expense when like we can afford it way easier and it helps us maintain good relations with Israel, which we want. You're talking about size. It's about some people want power. I mean, it, by I don't by population, Israel is smaller than most countries in the region. By um, uh, by territory, it's smaller than most countries in the region. Uh, I don't. What do, you, what do you want? It. I mean, the GDP is obviously higher. But What's the one thing I said? What does being smaller than the U.S. just or capacity to buy? It means it. We're able to afford it. It's a much smaller percentage of our GDP to buy the Iron Dome than it is for Israel. It's cheaper for us as a percentage of GDP. It's more affordable for us. It helps us maintain good relations with Israel. My only point is that sending defensive weapons to Israel, like the Iron Dome, which literally protects Israeli civilians, does not make you a Zionist. We're talking about that we should. Doesn't necessarily make you a Zionist. We're not talking about. I think that something really scary is going on with young men. Um, I saw this during Gamergate, and one of the mistakes. You sound I feel so propaganda. What did I say? That was propaganda. What everything I said was right. <laughs> I mean, it's just propaganda. What, what am I saying? Uh, that as a percentage of GDP, it's cheaper for the U.S. to buy the Iron Dome than it is for Israel. Offer to Gaza, then we give Gaza aid. You know that, right? We give we gave Gaza like nine billion dollars worth of humanitarian aid, which I'm in support of. I think we should give Gaza more aid, especially after the war, to rebuild Gaza. Gate was treating these young men as if they were monsters. And I think the truth is we have two generations of young men that are looking for a path mm -hmm. and they're lost and they're lonely. And Andrew Tate is talking to them in terms they understand and the Democrats are not. So I think that, um, you know, just talking about the direct, we can get a chance to do this today. I no offer, I don't do it. Well, he's, we're going to disagree. One, I'm going to say that Israel's government is a lot better than Hamas. And two, I'm going to say that Israel is justified in fighting a war, whereas Hamas is not. 
justified in fighting the war. I think if the Democratic Party cannot figure out a way. <laughs> wow, thank you, Fin81. Yes, talk about women's rights, talk about LGBT rights, but stop telling men that they don't matter. I don't think we're going to win elections. Mm. So I think we need to get extremely serious about this. Yeah, if you want to understand the slide generationally, my generation's male role model in the public, in the, on the internet, is Jordan Peterson, yeah. who I think is a great guy. I've just been touring with him, so I would say that, but he is a great guy, a really, truly great man. Uh, and Gen Z's male role model is Andrew Tate. That's right. About whom I would definitely not say the same thing. That's right. Um, I always find Jordan Peterson really interesting. You know, I've, I've talked about this a million times, but, uh, you know, I have been sober for 20 years. So a lot of his struggles with, you know, finding yourself addicted and trying mm -hmm. to find a path back, I really identify with that. I've always yeah. wanted to talk to him about it. Yeah, he's great. And what he's doing now is he's not really talking about the culture war or politics or anything. And, and uh, I'm glad he's not. I think it's a great thing that he's doing because he's talking to people about how to live a good life. Yeah. And he's telling them. Do not see values of protecting Gaza civilians with the same tech you see good for Israel. But the, the difference, obviously, when Hamas launches rockets at Israel, those rockets are aimed at civilian civilian areas, right? So it's probably justified to try, try to stop that attack. Whereas when Israel launches a strike in Gaza, now we're going to disagree on this. Israel already launches it at military targets and tries to minimize civilian harm. So it's probably not justified to stop that attack because that attack is going after Hamas militants. <laughs> Very powerful stories. I imagine about, you're going to disagree with that, but some of the ways to do that, you know, you don't have to believe in God or not or whatever. It's just a very powerful way of looking at the world and being constructive, productive, creative, you know, passionate, driven, and living a good life and contributing to others. Yeah. Uh, that's a good role model. But I think that the fact that the next generation is leaning in a different direction tells you quite a lot about what young men are dealing with, what they're being told about who they are, what their role is in the world, and the way the economy is changing and all of that. So I think it's a, it's I think a, great it's a really hard time to be a young man. I was, you know, my husband, I've talked to him about this so much, like what it was like for him growing up and learning to be a man. Yeah, there were, there were culture, there were institutions there a generation ago. I don't think those exist today. I think we're throwing our young men online. I think they're not learning to interact Bays. with people in the real world. I think they're lonely. Bays, they're just like me, guys. Horny, and I think they're 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 lost. Um, just you know, like me, Bay. I love gaming and gooning and streaming. We've talked a lot That's about how democracy survives from here. How can any country survive without? We're building the goon republic, the male gooning republic. Young men. And Brianna Wu is not invited. In a path like it can't. So you know, I I really wish the Democrats would make it a project to find our public figures that can talk to those young men in honest ways and, and try to bring them in and come up with some public policy to make their lives better. All right. Well, the three Democrats who are listening, mm -hmm. thank you for being around. Take that to heart <laughs> and head on over to Locals uh, where we ask Brianna your questions. I think Zero is pretty basic in that interview, which I expected going in. <laughs>